All right, so I'm ready to begin. I hope you are too. So I'm encouraging you, phones away, off, focuses on me, focuses on physics, try to compartmentalize all the other things that are going on. Like, oh, that's a little bit better. Okay, so let's talk about yours. Uh, you will remember in grade 11, all of the vector stuff was done with. Yes, protractor ruler. Child's play. Come on, forget it. No more rulers. No more protractors. Oh, do you want to die? No. We hated that. Oh, well, I'm going to now show you the mathematical easier way. Now that you're, you know, a little more advanced in your mathematical abilities. And you might think I'm lying, but that's true. Okay? I'm going to show you what are known as vector components. And you're going to say to me, Mr. Ted, why didn't you show us that last year? And the answer is you've got to understand, that first of all, you've got to know west and east and all that. You've got to have sort of a general basic understanding, and that's the best way to do it. You can do far more uh, complex questions with this, greater accuracy. Um, it just involves a little bit of math skills, that's all. Well, they're not using rulers and projects. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have to. I think you know they, they have to be able to do it as a backup. Like if their computer goes down, right? They got they got to understand what's going on. They got to be able to sort of draw on a map and yeah. But they're not. No, they're not navigating with a ruler. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, do you remember from grade eleven? Does the order that you add vectors matter? No. We proved that with the prior one. Although, for the first time ever, I had an entire class of grade 11, and not one group ended up on the same spot. Hard to believe. I don't think I've ever had that happen before. Usually, it's only one or two that don't end up on the same spot. So, and I'm going to show that to you here. To add two, new, new, uh, to add two vectors numerically. So, here's vector A. It's in red. Now, a vector can also be represented by a coordinate pair. Right? Two, two numbers, an X and a Y. Like, me, we might call this, like, I don't know, like 6, and that would be like east, maybe 30 north. Remember that stuff? Okay, you're still going to see that, right? But that, that number there, that distance can be represented by an x and a y component. So what is the x component here of the red? 7 and 4. So whatever this value is here, now you can figure this out. Like this would be 7 squared plus 4 squared, right? 49... Uh, plus 36, what's 49 plus 36? 50, 86, 85, square root 85 is like 8.3 or so. Okay, so we'll call this, you guys are talking instead of listening. you got to listen. 8.3 is the vector, but it's broken up into components, x and y, which are in this case 7 and 4, right? Just watch the animation here. Okay, so there's vector A, there's vector B. We add them tip to tail, remember that? So there's vector C. So what if I just took vectors A, its component of 7, and it, the, B, or the BX component of 5, and add them together and got 12? Could I just add the components together to get the result? It's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so I've taken this vector A here, and this is the X component of it. In vector B, this is the x component over here, and instead of sort of doing rulers and protractors, I've just added the x's together, added the y's together, and look where I end up, right there. Okay? So I'm going to show you mathematically how to do that. You probably already have the skills, you just haven't been sort of shown how to put all those pieces together. Okay, so you have a page that kind of matches this. It says in grade 11 we added two types of vectors, vectors at right angles to each other, and we used Pythagoras. Remember that? You don't have this. You don't have this yet. This is just background stuff. You don't have to write this down. Listen and go, okay, yeah, all along. Grade 11 we added two types of vectors. They were at right angles and we used Pythagoras. Remember doing that? Yes. Remember me yelling at you when you tried to use Pythagoras when they weren't at right angles? Yes. You no longer have to worry about that. This components takes care of it, right? But if you've got them at right angles, then you simply did what? A squared, B squared, C squared. Remember that kind of stuff? Yeah. Right? Okay. And then when it was not at right angles, you had to actually get a ruler, a protractor, and measure, right? That's how we did it in grade 11. Again, not doing that anymore. Okay. So, 
When you did it, you do have this, I think, right? Sort of, kind of, right there. When you did it by scale, you had to take, right? You had to come up with a scale. You had to do the ruler protractor. Tip to tail. Where's the resultant? From there to there, right? And you had to actually, to find it, you actually had to measure with a ruler, measure with a protractor. Remember the plus and minus three millimeters, all that stuff? Okay, all gone. 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 Even if you don't remember it, it's okay, because it's gone. Let's do it by components. Oh, I should show you this too. Okay, so we're going to label this component AX, and we're going to label it AY. Those of you that had me second semester, uh, I started talking about the X component of uh, force. Remember talking about that? Where we had like, um, yeah, we had like Johnny pulling a wagon like this, right? And we called this FA, and this was FAX. Remember that? Those of you in second semester? Those of you in first semester, I think when I came back, I went back and did went over some of this stuff. I was still calling it FH. Does that kind of ring a bell for some of you? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to not do that anymore because I realize that if I call it FAX, right, then I'm leading grade 11s into this stuff about X and Y components. So that's what I'm going to be doing from now on. Those of you that missed that first semester, can't change past. Okay, so here's vector A. Would you agree that this is the X component of A? Would you agree that this is the Y component of A? Okay, and then likewise for B and for C, right? Okay, so if I'm going to take A, B, and C and actually add them together by scale, just for all you do is watch, here's A. I'm going to start, I don't know, let's just start here. So to actually add these geometrically by scale, I'm going to do this. Right? And then I'm going to do this. And then my resultant is from where to where? From, the, from right here, right? there, right? That's kind of how we did it in grade 11. And what do we call that? Result. Okay, now what if I just add all the x's together? I'll start here. x and x and then, now what do I do with this one? Do I have to flip it? Just tip to tail, right? So I'm just going to put the end of it where? Right there which makes my Rx from where to where? Let's put it in black. From where we started to where we ended. That is my Rx, right? All I've done is added all the Xs. Now I'm going to add all my Ys. Get over it. Doesn't want to go over it. Uh, why is this one green? Okay, so now in black, my RY is like that, right? Now what happens if I take this X So, the point is, you can take the X and Y components and add them together. Right? Take the X components, add them together. Take the Y components, and add them together. And then what do you end up with at the very end? What kind of triangle do you end up with at the end? It's a 90 degree triangle. Is it always going to be a 90 degree triangle? Yeah, because it's X and Y components. They are 90 degrees to each other. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, we're not going to do it by scale. We're going to figure out what the X component is. And the Y component is, we're going to find that mathematically. Because is this a 90 degree triangle? Yes. Do I know this angle? Do I know this distance right here, the value of A? Yeah. So I can find mathematically AX and AY. And then when I add them, do I have to worry about the direction? No, because they're all in the same line, right? To the right is positive, to the left is negative. I realize this isn't all making 100% sense just yet. I'm not just going to throw it at you. I'm telling you ahead of time, these are the steps that we're going to do, and now I'm going to break it down into smaller steps. So don't freak out that you don't get it just yet. Okay? In fact, I'll probably come back to this when we're all done, and I'll show you that, and then you go, oh, okay, all right. All right, so now I think you go to your sheet. Do you have this? 
Oh, no, you don't, do you? the x and y components of each vector. So you've got uh, north 20 east, 0.5 kilometers. So this is 0.5. I'm going to call this d1y and you're going to call this one d1x. So you should draw that right in here. So you can do it right up there. That's good. Yeah. Talking about this one right, right there. So how do I, what's my first step? Find the components. Now I think I have it all written down here. Yes, I do. Okay, so D1X right here. Is it opposite or is it adjacent? Opposite. So we're going to use sine, cos, or tan. Sine. So D1X right here is equal to 0.5 sine 20. Where do you get the 0.5 from? That's the length of D1. D1x is 0.5 sine 20. Write it down, Brave, in the spot. D1y is adjacent. Adjacent uses cosine 0.5, cos 20, and you get 0.47. Are they both positive? Show me, are they both positive? Yep, you're right. How come? Do you know why? Because the x is to the right, which is positive, and the y is to the up, which is also positive. So they're both positive. Please stop me here if you're lost, because it's easier to get you found if you're only a little bit lost than I'm a whole lot lost. By not saying I'm lost, you are saying I'm found. Opposite of 20, opposite sign, adjacent, right? Okay, so what did I do? What did I do here? I found the components of the first vector. What's my next step? Find the x and y components of d2. Now d2, it turns out, is straight west. What am I going to do? Well, what is the x component? If D2 is minus 0.3, it's 3 kilometers west, right? 
E2 is 3 kilometers west, so the x component is all of that 0.3. Why is it negative? Braden, why is it negative? Because it's to the left. You mispronounced it the first time. Why is the y component zero? It doesn't go up or down. There is no y component. Is that okay? Yeah, that's awesome. You don't have to do any math. Pardon me? The, the x is point, negative point 0.3. The y is zero. The last one has an angle. It's 50 degrees. Now it's... Um, it's west 50 south, west 50 south. Now here's the other nice thing about this, right? When you see west 50 south, you draw west, you draw south, and write in 50. Does it have to be to scale? No. Right. So actually drawing those angles, drawing those vectors is quite easy now from, from the description. West 50 south. There's your start point. West south right how far 50 degrees come on pause here for some reason your rx is minus 0.64 yeah Braden I'm going to give you a chance right away to redeem yourself yeah are you paying attention I'm going to ask you the reverse of the question. You've got to think now. Why is this to the left? Very good. Yeah? Okay. What if I ask you why this one is down? I'm not asking you. I just said, if, if I were to ask you that. There. Left and down, right? Do you have to draw the triangle? You probably should. You probably should. It's kind of one of those you can probably get away with it, but you probably should. Okay, what's the next step, Renee? Yeah, from grade 9, right? So you're going to write something like what? Do I even have it? Well, maybe it's on the next page. Here it is here. So I just redrew it here. You're going to write, I wrote R squared is... R squared is equal to Rx squared plus Ry squared, because that's what these are, right? This is the Rx, and this is the Ry. Yeah, it's not technically right. Because it's the X component of the R, right? Yeah. So I take that 0.64 squared, and I take that minus 0.14 and squared, and you get 0.66. I hope you can all solve that. And at this point, Renee, I'm going to throw in some units because the whole thing was we were just adding displacements. So whatever the question asks for, you're just going to, right? There's the unit there. Should you put it like here and here? Like, is it incorrect to do this? No, not at all, right? But it's, yeah. Yeah. So my answer is 0.66 kilometers. Am I done? How come? Need an angle. Fortunately, once again, it will be what kind of triangle? A right triangle. And this is grade 9 math. Right? What sides do I have? I have the opposite and I have the adjacent. So it's going to be tan. You're right. You do actually have the hypotenuse. You're right. Mm, well, we'll work through that right away. 5,000. Megan, I've said a million times, don't exaggerate. Actually, you know what? In all the years I've been saying that, it's probably close to a million. I've probably said it a hundred times. Theta is equal to the inverse tan of 0.14 over 0.64. Why that order? Because it's... Opposite over adjacent, opposite 0.14, adjacent 0.64, 0.219 is that, second function 10, 
You should get a number between 0 and 90. I'll let you try it. No, negative 1 means the inverse tan, right? The, the inverse function. Oh, oh, you don't have to put negatives here? Well, it's going to be negative over negative, so it's going to be positive. But you, you actually should, because at this point, you are no longer sort of talking about direction. You're just talking about an actual physical triangle. So even if one is negative and the one is positive, you should not put it. That's an excellent point to me. Okay? Do not put negatives in here if you're just going to match yourself up. Twelve degrees, I need one last thing. I need the the, the, the directions, right? So that would be what? West. West. And you can, it's easy to get because look at from there, which way do you go? West. And then you go south. So you write west, 12 south. From here, huh? West and then south. Okay, yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is go back and remind you of all the steps. Please tell me that you think this is easier than with a ruler or protractor. Certainly you should agree that it's more accurate, right? What would you do if there was three vectors? We did it by, we, yeah, right? Oh, we did three. Yeah, well, there was three vectors. What am I saying? There was three vectors. Just keep going. Just keep on going. Okay. Funny stuff. Okay. I got to feel. Oh, yeah, I got to go back and do the steps, right? Okay. So. Uh, let me write the steps for you. How about that? Steps. What would be step one, Carter? Factor addition. What would be step one? Hannah, what's the first thing that we did? You can write it wherever you want. The f like right back to the start. What's the first step we did? Of each vector? Yeah. Okay. Is that what you said? I thought you said the tan thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Find x and y components. Uh, not off. Yeah. Yep. Of all vectors. Find the x and y components of all vectors, not vectors, <coughs> or the vectors. Now, what I recommend you do is draw the picture over here on the left. Draw the little right triangle. Put your x component there and your y component there. I find it very handy to have the x and the y's all lined up, right? And then you can simply add them up. So all step one. Right? Find the x component and the y component for each vector. I said... I find it handy to draw the picture over on the left and then put the X first and then the Y in the second column. Like keep your keep all your X's in one column and all your Y's in another column. Still step one. What's step two? Yeah? Add X's. Step three, add Y's, or is that all step two? Add, add X's and Y's together, right? <laughs> then what? Should we draw the resultant triangle? Draw 
draw the resultant triangle. Well, maybe we'll say draw the resultant triangle and solve for hypotenuse. We'll say solve for R. Yep. That one's always going to count as long as you use the opposite and adjacent. Solve for R using Pythagoras and inverse 10. That's the angle, right? Well, okay, so Megan asked how many marks, so let's just see here. I would give one mark for the angle, one mark for that. Should I give you a mark for drawing this? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be, draw it. I'll be generous and I'll say yes today. Hey, you're only going to draw it if you get a mark for it, Renee? You're only going to draw it if you get a mark for it? Yeah, okay. All right. What if you don't what? I probably did. But it sure helps, right? Would I give you a, I would give you a mark for the adding of the X's and an adding of the Y's. And I would probably give you one for each X and Y component, like a half each. One, come on, you guys. Once you do one or two, it's like easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's put, actually, eight seems like four. Okay, I have. I'm not giving the handout today because I know I I see what happens, you guys. Is I give you the the pre test and you all jump through it and no one is even close to you. Because you guys want me to help you with the pre test. That's not the idea. Yeah. I'm not giving it to you until I see some of the stuff that I'm going to start saying I need to see some practice stuff. I made a big mistake that last time. You guys went right through it. I'm not going to do this. So for this, we have to like... This is just practice. I'll explain it. I'll explain it. Let me get everyone so they can see what it is. Okay, listen for about 90 more seconds, then I'll be quiet. Okay, so you've got, you've got a little handout here. Page one simply says, what? Draw each of the following vectors on a Cartesian coordinate system and break them down into vertical and horizontal ones. All you do is find the components. Do you have to add them together? No, you can't because the first one is in meters and the second one is in meters per second. They're different things. The first one is a displacement, the second one is a speed. All you do is find the components. Hannah, give me 30 more seconds. No? Oh. Thirty more, or thirty more seconds. Here. Okay, so all you're doing is finding the components there, right? Flip the page. I appreciate that. But as soon as I see, right? I mean, and I see your calculator out. I'm like, okay, well. Vector addition by components. Add the following vectors using the component method. Is there enough room there? Eh, probably not. I didn't make these up. I just copied them. Okay? There might be enough room in number one. There certainly isn't. I find it amusing that at the bottom, where there's three of them, they get an even less room. Okay? Probably not enough room there, unless you're working with one of those jeweler things. Okay? So that you are actually adding there. Okay? Add the following vectors. There's more adding ones there. Again, probably not enough room. Okay? So you've got, now, do you have to do all the vector components at the start? 
Oh, if you do two or three and you're doing fine, move on. I'm just giving you lots and lots of practice. Guess what's on the back? QR code that tells you the answers. They're also available on Okay? So they're also available on the link to school as well. So there, there's lots of places you can get help. Okay? You should also try on page 84 questions one and two. Okay? So I've given you sort of. There's more, yeah. yeah. I will gauge I will gauge things and try to figure out the best I can, right? If you miss a day, you guys, you gotta go on school of these, you gotta commit to being here as much as you can. I get it, people need to be away, I have to be away from time to time, right? But when you're here, you gotta be with me and engaged and know what's going on. And I promise I will do better at making sure my screen has the your sheets and do that right? Don't pack up now. I know what there's real temptation to do that, but here's where you Practice and solidify. Okay, now I can make some sense of this, right? If you wait till tonight or tomorrow or three days from now, you've lost all that. Okay, I'll be quiet. Okay, the first one says, okay, as I said, the first page, you're only finding the components. You're not adding them. How do you know that you're not adding them? It doesn't ask you to, first of all. And second of all, the first one is a displacement, is a D. The next one is a velocity. The next one is an acceleration. Can you add those together? No. You're not making fruit salad here, right? You can't. You can add apples and oranges, but you get fruit salad. You don't get, yeah, or whatever. Okay. So the first one says, 30 D equals 30 meters east. 30 north. So you draw a picture. East and north. How do I know east and north? East, north. East, great, are you watching? North. That's our D value, which is 30, and our angle is 30. But you're not done. You have to find the components. DX, DY, Is x adjacent or opposite? Adjacent, so you're going to use cosine. So it's going to be 30 cos 30. And the y is going to be 30 sine 30. 